The family Muridae is one of the largest families found in the true bug suborder Heteroptera. There are over 10,000 described species found around the world. Their common names include plant bugs, leaf bugs, and grass bugs. Most feed on plant juices extracted by using their stylets to macerate small areas of cells, then sucking up the material. They generally feed on leaves, petioles, and newly emerging stems. However, some feed on developing seeds, often while these are still in development. This can destroy those developing seeds. Because tissues are damaged by their feeding, plant leaves and stems are often distorted and discolored. A few myrids are predators and a couple of species have been introduced for biological control of other insects. We will also discuss some of the Lyageid plant bugs that attack landscape plants. Plant bugs generally feed by pushing their mandibular and maxillary stylets in and out of host plant tissues. This macerates the tissues and at the same time digestive enzymes are released out of the salivary canal. These help liquefy the tissues and cell contents. The liquefied material is then extracted. This is easily visible in the image at the upper right. If you look closely almost every spot has a dark center dot. This is where the stylets entered. Depending on the leaf architecture, plant and leaf bug feeding spots can be circular or angular. When feeding is performed on expanding leaf and stem tissues, this kills cells and the expanding cells will form distorted growth. This can be curling or twisting. In some cases, the dead tissues cause the leaves to tear or the leaf areas drop out, which results in a kind of ragged or tattered appearance that can somewhat resemble skeletonization. The four-line plant bug is an extremely common plant bug species found in our landscapes. It is named because the adult has four obvious longitudinal black stripes or lines down its back. The rest of the body is a yellow-green and the head is orange. The nymphs are a brilliant red color when they hatch and their wing pads are black. There are paired black dots on each of the abdominal segments. This pest overwinters as eggs and stems of potential host plants. In mid-spring, as favored host plants are setting out their new growth, the tidy nymphs hatch and they quickly move to the new plant growth to begin feeding. Their feeding spots can initially look like pit feeding of flea beetles, but if you look closely, the upper and lower epidermis will be intact. The nymphs prefer to hide and feed inside the unfolding leaves where they are easily missed. As they grow, they will feed in the open, but if they see movement, they will quickly run to the other side of the leaf to hide. The nymphs take about a month to develop, and the adults continue to feed and cause more damage for another few weeks. I wanted to use this old USDA illustration to show how the markings of the adult bug obscure the typical triangle and rhomboid that help diagnose that an insect is a true bug. In the case of this insect, the wing membrane is black, so when they overlap, you don't see the rhombus shape. The first three nymphal instars also have the black wing pads and black dots on the abdomen, but the fourth and fifth instars begin displaying the black lines on the wing pads. Obviously, what is missing in this illustration is the egg and the other three instars. The eggs are elongate, bing-shaped structures. The adults of this insect can be present for much of the summer, but their feeding activity generally becomes less evident in July and August. This is a factor of the adults eating less frequently, the plant foliage hardening off, and flowers being present. When the adults feed on flowers and flower parts, damage is often not as visible, but developing seeds can be destroyed. The females insert eggs into slits of favored host plant stems in late summer and into the early fall. The four-line plant bug is known to feed on over 150 species of plants. 
In landscapes, it favors mums, daisy flowers, and all plants in the mint family, such as bee balm, basils, and coleus. Azaleas, dogwood, forsythia, and viburnum are common woody shrubs that are favored hosts. When this pest has been managed and numbers of nymphs are low, this pest can be easily managed by simply cupping your hands around the stem of a plant that is exhibiting the feeding damage. By sliding your hands up the stem, the little nymph will soon hop out of the foliage onto your hands where it can be crushed. The best management technique is to cut all of the favored host perennials to the ground in October into November and compost, finely grind the stems, or discard the stems. The tarnished plant bug is another common landscape pest, but it is more important in fruit and vegetable production. It has been reported as being a pest of nearly 385 plants, which is over half of all the cultivated plants in North America. It is also an important pest in deciduous and carnivorous seedling nurseries. This pest overwinters as adults in leaf litter and other protected habitats. In early spring, feeding is resumed with the adults damaging young expanding foliage. Females insert eggs into leaf petioles or into stems at the bases of leaves. Eggs take about 10 days to hatch, and the green nymphs feed by extracting maceration fluids from leaves and stems. The five nymphal instars are usually completed in three to four weeks. This usually means that two to four generations can be completed in a summer. In urban landscapes, tarnished plant bug damage is usually scattered among many plants, so it is often missed. The adults also feed in the bases of flowers and developing seed pods, which can destroy the developing seeds. This is especially important in flower and vegetable seed production nurseries. The honey locust plant bug was generally considered to be a non-pest until thornless honey locust trees were introduced and began to be extensively used as urban landscape trees. This pest overwinters as eggs that have been inserted into the bark tissues of one to two year old shoots. As the new honey locust buds expand, the eggs hatch and the tiny green nymphs are well camouflaged among the developing leaves. As the nymphs feed on the expanding leaves and leaf stems, the leaflets can curl and turn brown. Extensive infestations usually with the honey locust tree hopper being involved, can cause defoliation of infested trees. This stresses the trees that have to develop secondary leaf buds, which leads to borer attacks and canker diseases. The nymphs take about a month to develop, and the adults feed for another month before the females insert eggs into bark tissues. There is only one generation per season. Controls generally target the hatching nymphs when there is little actual foliage showing. Systemic insecticides can be effective, but honey locust trees also bloom early in the season, so systemics that have bee toxicity issues should be avoided. The sycamore plant bug is another host-specific species. The adult bugs are light green to almost white with some darker markings, and the nymphs start out nearly white, which blends in with the white tumescence that coats sycamore leaf undersurfaces. As the nymphs grow, they become a bit more green in color. This is another pest that overwinters its eggs that are inserted into the bark of small branches. In the spring, when new leaves are about half expanded, the nymphs hatch and begin feeding on the leaves, primarily from the undersurface. Extensive early feeding punctures can cause considerable crumpling and tattering of the leaves as they finish expanding. The nymphs take three to five weeks to grow through their five nymphal instars, and adults are usually present by mid-June. The adults can be found on the trees into August. Damage by this pest is often mistaken as having been caused by the sycamore lace bug, which usually doesn't cause the tattering of the leaves. Females lay eggs over an extended period, but the eggs don't hatch until the following spring. 
There are many species of plant bugs in North America, and many trees and shrubs can have one to two species that exclusively feed on them. Most seem to be of little consequence. However, the ash plant bug used to be a major pest of landscape ashes until the emerald ash borer arrived. This pest has a life cycle similar to the honey locust and sycamore plant bugs with eggs overwintering and spring nymphs causing severe twisting and distortion of the leaves. The adults of this pest can also cause severe leaf yellowing and early leaf drop in the summer months. Another common plant bug is found on black locust trees. What is interesting about this pest is that its black and yellow markings are very similar to the markings found on the black locust leaf beetle. Where yucca plants are used for ornamental purposes, the yucca plant bug can be a conspicuous pest. The nymphs are a bright red color with black wing pads and masses of the nymphs on the undersides of the green leaves are easily noticed. The nymphs make yellow feeding spots on the leaves and they tend to produce obvious black tar spots. The adults have completely black wings but retain the red on the head and pronotum. The eggs overwinter in leaf tissues and these hatch in mid-spring. The nymphs can develop in three to four weeks as they go through their five nymphal instars. The adults continue to be found until midsummer. If not managed, very large populations can build up over a two to three year period. Since leaf removal is not an option to remove eggs, sprays when nymphs are first observed is the recommended management option. The garden flea hopper is one of our last mirrored bugs that we will cover. While being a mirrored, it is highly modified by having enlarged hind femurs which are used for jumping. These are small black insects and they can be easily mistaken for some of the small round flea beetles. The feeding of the flea hopper nymphs is typical of mirrors with plant tissues being macerated, liquefied, and removed. These feeding spots can look a lot like flea beetle pit feeding spots, but with a hand lens the epidermis will appear to be intact. The females are oval and the males more slender. The adults make small white flecks on leaves as they feed and this can be mistaken for spider mite damage. The nymphs prefer to feed on the undersurfaces of leaves and they are green. This pest can occur on perennial and annual flowers in the landscape but they also attack numerous vegetable plants. The life cycle can take about 30 days to complete and multiple generations occur each summer. It overwinters as eggs inserted into plant stems. Many homeowners and landscape managers are recommending planting of more milkweeds in our urban landscapes. This is to attract butterflies and provide food for the monarch butterfly larvae. Unfortunately, there are several other insects that specialize in using milkweeds as hosts. Wild as well as cultivated milkweeds are used by two Lygiad plant bugs, the milkweed bug and the larger milkweed bug. Both bugs have the typical bug shape and are bright orange with black markings. The adults that have not laid eggs in the previous season overwinter in protected sites, generally in dense leaf litter and under logs. In the spring, these adults emerge, feed on milkweed sap, and mate. Mated females lay cluster of eggs around the flower stalks. When the nymphs hatch, they are bright red-orange with black wing pads and markings. The nymphs feed on milkweed sap and their feeding doesn't seem to cause much visible damage. The nymphs take four to six weeks to finish development. The new adults often lay eggs and concentrate their eggs on the seed pods developing on milkweed plants. The adults can live for two months or more during the summer. This insect is often used in entomology research as it is easily cultivated by using harvested milkweed seeds as a food source. In the landscape, control is usually not necessary. The box elder bug is in another plant bug family, the scentless plant bugs. They are about five-eighths of an inch long as adults. The adults are dark gray with red outlines on the wings and sides of the pronotum. 
Like the milkweed bug, adults overwinter in protected sites, including attics and voids of homes. In the spring, about the time the box elder trees, red and silver maple trees, set out seeds, the adults lay eggs on or near seed clusters. The nymphs are a pinkish red color with dark gray heads and wing pads. The nymphs feed on the developing seeds and they usually complete their five nymphal instars by mid-June. In many cases, the maple seeds may drop early from the feeding damage and the undeveloped nymphs will leave the trees in search of other maples with seeds. The new adults may also exit the trees in abundance at that time to try to find places to hide from summer heat and drought. They can cluster by the thousands on the sunny sides of buildings. Nymphs that haven't finished their development will often feed on their younger siblings in order to finish their last instar. This cannibalism can result in the bugs making dark fecal spots on building siding. The red-shouldered bug is another scentless plant bug and its behavior and life cycle is very similar to the box elder bug. This bug is most commonly associated with golden rain trees that are commonly grown in southern states. While it will feed on some other hosts, large populations usually develop on golden rain trees. In southern states, all stages can be found during much of the season, but where freezing temperatures are the norm during the winter, only adults seem to be able to survive. The nymphs are a pinkish red color with gray wing pads, pronotum, and head. These insects prefer to feed on the seed coats of the golden rain tree, and they will feed on developing seeds as well as drop seeds. During periods of drought, the insects will cluster on the sides of buildings. When the nymphs and adults are feeding on drop seeds, their bodies will cause red staining of shoes and clothing if the bugs are crushed. This has given them another common name of red stainers. The bugs don't cause much damage to host plants as they feed primarily on the seeds, but their nuisance factor commonly requires treatments to be made.